This week, Dave hooks up with his good buddy and Lake Erie super stick, Simon the Iceman Frost, as the two attempt to cross some ice with the crosstail shack. There he is. Up to come. There we go. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, that's a good fish. Boom. Mine is bigger. No oh, way. Yeah, look at Mine's way fatter. I got the chubby one. I'm Dave Mercer, pro angler and all-round fishing big mouth. Today, I've got one day on one body of water, and I am surrounded by cameras. Unfortunately for me, but fortunately for you, they're going to show you everything that happens, and I mean everything. Bet you thought I was gonna get a backlash. Welcome to Facts of Fishing, the show. Brought to you by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. Shimano, technology you can feel. Yamaha, conquer water. Phoenix Boats. Live Target, lifelike lures. Jacko, eat, sleep, Jacko. And Rigid Industries LED Lighting, excellence in innovation. Boy, it is that time of year. You know the time. Well, some of you know the time, but some of you do not know the time. And what I'm talking about is a lot of you, you know, you, I mean, people are calling right now. The phone is blowing up right now. I'm not answering the phone. Why? Because we're going fishing. Most people put their boat away this time of year. Not us. This is when the fishing gets really, really good. As soon as it gets frosty, look out. And we are with the frost man himself today. Simon, the Iceman Frost. And I'll be honest, you may get a little cold getting to those fish. It may be a little bumpy, but as long as you're prepared, like I am here today, for those of you worried, no, don't worry, I, I don't plan on crashing. But this helmet is going to keep me safe from the cold. Be prepared and go out and get them by any means necessary. So one trick I'm doing here is not the way I'm rigging the bait, just nose hooking it, you know, standard drop shot. The key is these fish, they're a little inactive, hugging bottom. So normal drop shot, we would set maybe 18 inches. Today, to get these fish to bite, is we're setting a drop shot three, four inches high. Still, the weight's on the bottom, three, four inches high, bait's up here, still in their face. Possible mark, just super, super tight to the bottom. Barely see it. You know, what Simon said is one of the biggest keys to drop shot fishing. I mean, people get stuck on that, you know, 12 to 18 inch lead and they never change. It's crazy and it's not just making it shorter. I mean, there's been times where I've fished a drop shot with as much as a four foot lead because the fish are up and suspended. Always pay attention to the mood of the fish when you're deciding your drop shot length. We're looking at these fish and you can hardly pick them up on the graph. That's how low they're sitting to the bottom, belly to the bottom. So your bait, shouldn't be too far from the bottom when you're fishing it. There's one. Simon's hooked up. I don't even know if I can turn this fish. This feels like a big fish. This thing's just do, 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 do. Very, very light. Oh, I just got smoked too. Not a giant, but I'm not complaining. Even with the braid, I could barely feel that. He probably hit that four or five times before I got a hook into him. The only problem with running a short lead, you go through a few extra weights because that momentum, when the fish hits and starts to jump, it'll break that little tag end. So you go through a few more weights, but definitely worth it. Fish shot. He feels a little better. And I tell you, even running that braid, I barely felt that pickup. 
and he behaved. You know, good little Lake Erie fish here, quality fish. Gonna be looking for some bigger ones today. Get them on that cross tail. There's fish. Oh, Simon's letting the fish go. I'm fighting the fish. Oh. I let you take the trolling motor, Simon. Well, I deal with that, dude. Fish on. Drop right back down. Got another one. <laughs> Cue the other fish right there. That's what fall fishing is all about. Oh, right, here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. To fall freakzilla. Do not lose that fish, Simon. Got it. This is why you come out here in the fall. You catch these beasts all day long. You get on the right school, give them the right presentation, and you can catch a lot of these. You know, one of the keys that we're finding early on here today is how you're moving the bait. And a lot of times I'll talk about with a drop shot bait, especially a soft, supple bait, like a crosstail shad, and I'll talk, there he is, he ate it. That's a good fish, a good fish. Here he comes, oh, it's a tank. It is another tank, Simon. But a lot of times I'll talk about, you know, you don't need to move that bait much because it's so soft and supple. You know, it's gonna have movement just with the current of the water. But uh, when the water is this dirty, movement is key. Why? Just simply because those fish gotta find that bait somehow and their vision is limited. So they're feeding by feel and the movement of the bait is key. We are really shaking that bait. Oh, oh, look at that fish. Fish up. And that is what this fall fishing is all about. You get fish and they group up and a lot of people, they put their boat away. Don't put your boat away. Keep it in the water. Mm. And you may find yourself catching a few of these bad boys. But enough of me. Cue Simon with his fish. Here comes mine, not as big as Dave's, but I'll definitely take it. Whoa, what, what'd you say? Okay, now this, ne <laughs> this, this never happens. It doesn't, but it did this time, so. I'm gonna sneak mine in over here. <laughs> I'm gonna let mine go. This segment is brought to you by ARE Truck Caps. ARE, outfit for life. There he is. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's a good one, dude. That is a good one. Here he comes. Those are the kind you need. Oh. Here he comes again. Oh, I just missed oh, one. Oh my goodness. I think I lost my bait. Come here. There we go. So remember I mentioned earlier about the short lead? What's happened is that broke right at the hook. So I've got to retie that. But a fish like that, that's definitely worth it. Third fish. Feels good, because he is. Come here, dude. Oh, easy. Oh. Okay, I'm going down for his cousin. You know, we keep talking about the movement and how important it is for these fish. And this fish right here, a prime example, got him of why movement matters. And Simon's hooked up right now. This fish, blind in one eye, but shaking that bait paid off in a big, big way. Get him back in. Oh, see ya. Oh, giant, giant, giant. Fish. Giant? Need the net? No, no, no. I'm only grabbing the net for triple sow cows. That is a good one right there. Dude, look how thick that fish is. It's all tattooed up. Oh, there's fish. And Dave's got another one. Oh, it's another good one. Oh, God. He came off. I rushed him. I rushed him. It was another big one. I'm getting a little jacked up. And that is one of the things you're gonna have to battle with this style of fishing. I mean, you get on top of these fish like this and uh, your heart rate is gonna, oh, you just bit it again. Your heart rate is gonna start pumping. You need to remain calm, which I don't know if you realize this, but uh, I have an issue with being calm. And that fish made me pay. This was a big one. Oh, oh, dude. oh. this is a giant oh. Oh, tank. <laughs> Look at this thing, dude. It's a wallowing triple sow cow. Oh, dude, get me the net. We're gonna net this one. Oh, you keep fishing, dude. Pass me the net. I'll get it. Okay, I got it. 
Come here, dude. I'm on. See, it's a good thing you kept fishing. Ooh, that right there. Mm, that's the Christmas ham. <laughs> An absolute chunk right there. It's a good one, Simon? I think so. Let me know if you need the net. Oh, man. That's the guy uh, you come out here for. Oh, yeah. That's good fish. Big one? Yeah. Oh, dude. That is a big one. I mean, not that we haven't caught big ones, but you know you're catching big ones when you need to use the net. Just grab that thing, dude. Oh, my goodness. That right there is a pretty incredible Lake Erie double header. Boom. Mine is bigger. No oh, way. Yeah, look at Mine's way fatter. I got the chubby one. Mine's thicker. This way. We'll let the audience decide who's got the bigger fish. That's right. Put the votometer up on the yeah, screen. We need a votometer. Let us know which bass is bigger. There's definitely a mark. Oh, look at them. You know, a big percentage of the fish we're catching here today are directly below the boat. I mean, you hear us keep saying, Markin, there's one. They're down there. You're seeing them right below the boat. But one of the keys with that is, first of all, people get stuck in that mind frame thinking, I can't drop right below the boat. Well, we're, you know, in 30 something feet of water, which is 10 feet longer than this boat. So if you look at the length of your boat and understand just how deep of water you're fishing in, it is really easy to just drop below the boat. But one of the keys with that is a big percentage of those fish are going to come as soon as that bait hits the bottom. Now what you see, we're using heavy weights. So when that weight comes shooting down there and hits the bottom, I mean, think about it like anything else. It's like something falls in your living room while you're watching this. You turn and you direct attention to it and that's what these fish are doing. So when you drop that bait down, I'll let it fall on a slack line, but I will always be watching that line, the area that line enters the water, for that little tick on the initial drop. There he is. Up he comes. <laughs> I think there's a few more down there. Oh, there we go. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, that's a good fish. That is a big fish right there. This is unbelievable. They're stacked in here. Come here. Ooh. Ah, gotcha. When you're on a pack of fish like this, I mean, the smart thing is drop your bait down there. I mean, we're showing it off to you guys because, I mean, it makes us feel good about ourselves, but let him go. And while I showed them to you guys, we're both back down there. And if this was a good fishing show, they'd have caught one by now, but it's not. So, I'm sorry. Marking. They're being monkeys, though. Oh, I know. Look at the graph. Hook set's coming up. There we go. Little dude. Come here, Junior. There he is. You got him. Well, I messed with this one, Simon. I'll let you catch one. Oh, uh, thank you. You didn't jump? Aren't you? Yeah, you are. <laughs> I don't know what to say. There are stacks and stacks of these dudes down there, and they got one thing only on their mind, and that is munch munch time. I mean, that fish right there is not a giant. I'm not telling you it's a giant, but you look at its gut. I mean, these fish, even the small ones, are tanks. There's one. Oh, you missed them? Yeah, I can't even deny that one. It's right on film to everything. Got another one back in there. Dave's already back in. There he is. Oh, good, good fish. Fish that size, and I barely felt that tick. Ooh. I think he wants to be on the show. Trust me, that fish is going on the show. Come here, you. Oh! oh. <laughs> I got him now. I'm trying to go for the most energetic yoga landings I've ever done. I don't know if I would classify that as energetic. There's one. Up she comes, and she's taken. Oh, there he is. Doubled up. Here he comes. I got this one. Dave's landed another one. We're on a big school of fish. Now, I need to set the record straight. This is more like it. Once you see the high-tech editing devices we do, mine will be way bigger. We caught these fish at deep water. 
And normally if you let them go right away, it's, it's not really a, an issue. What happens is the air bladder blows up full of air, kind of like a diver, but the opposite way. Now, if we let him go now, all he's gonna do is float on the surface. Real simple procedure, put the fish on a nice smooth surface, take a 16 gauge, inch and a half to two inch syringe, you can get these at almost any feed mill. Trace it back, put the scale down, come back about two inches. Another nice way to do it is lift this fin, come down from that fin, and do like a little cross section there. Lift a scale, and you can hear the air coming out of that fish. Now just gentle pressure on his belly. So just picture like trying to let air out of a balloon, very gently. Pull the needle out, let the air out, hold the fish. We're gonna let this one go, and away you go. fish. Mm, big one, Simon. Oh, good fish. Got another one, Dave. I'm gonna let this one go. Bunch down there. Oh, wow, the graph is lit up with them. This is why you don't put your boat away. Come here, buddy. Gotta love Lake Erie. There he is. Oh, easy. Mark him more, Dave. I'm a little busy right now, Simon. Well, I just thought I would let you know. Mm. <laughs> you know, this particular color of crosstail, there's four specific new colors that they designed for the Great Lakes. This bad boy right here is called Melon Copper, and uh, I don't have the right to do this, but I'm going to do it right now. I'm renaming it. This should be called Melon Money, because today, that is exactly what it is. If you'd like to experience your own Great Lakes Smallmouth Smash Fest, contact Lake Erie Super Guide Simon the Iceman Frost at simonfrost.ca. This segment is brought to you by Hook Performance Fishing. Get him, get him, get him. Oh, smoked it. There he is. We found some. It looks okay. Absolutely spoiled when you call that fish okay. Ah! I might have lost my baby. Nope, obviously not. Got him. <laughs> oh my. Big one. I'm letting the fish go. Simon's fish is right below us. Actually, it might be a tank. Three hours ago, you'd be freaking out about that one. But look at the big hump on him. Little tiny head, giant body. It's like me. There he is. Got him. It is so hard when you get on a pile of fish like this just to remain calm and you start going through some smaller fish and you kind of want to horse them. But you got to remember when you're fishing a great lake like Lake Erie, any fish can turn out to be an absolute giant. So you don't want to mess with them too much. Look at that. See how that fish is hooked right there? How crazy is that? That fish came after that bait three times and that last time he just swatted at it. They're having a hard time finding the bait just because of the water color. And Simon's hooked up. <sighs> he does not want to come in. Oh, I guess I know oh, why. That. that is a giant dude. Do not lose that fish. Check out the size of this beast. Got rods all over the place, multiple fish. This is the Rocky Balboa of smallmouth. He's been duking it out down there with him most key moment on these drop down fish is as soon as that bait hits there, you better be in contact so you can feel. And that's one of the advantages of using braided line like this Power Pro, because there's no give in it. Oh, that's not a big one. But because of that no stretch, it allows you to feel things that you would not feel on a monofilament oh, or even it. a fluorocarbon. Going back down, marking. There they are. We go. On the drop. Another chunk. It's albino bass. Cold, dirty water, and you get pale albino looking bass. Got him. And once again, when you find one, there is others. There we go. This might be a good one. I'm back now. I'm coming here, dude. Chill out. Always have a fishing buddy to share them with. You can catch one, and then he gets his turn. And back over again. See ya. There we go. Got him. Doubled up. Ah, oh, I lost mine. No, I didn't. Mine just decided to get bigger. Oh, dude. <laughs> oh, 
I like the way this one worked out. Oh, this is not working out well. No, this favorite. is perfect. Okay, come on, fall off. <laughs> Simon, what did you think of that double header? I think mine got wet and it shrank a little bit. You must have been fishing in colder water. Yeah, yeah, my shrinkage. That shrinkage. I'm dropping mine. <laughs> got him. So does this count as a triple header? Yeah, yeah, I've still got this fish. This one's gone. I'm going to try to make it a quad. Put the votometer up on the screen. Do you think we can turn this into a quad? Do you have faith? That was the triple. A little better than the last one. There we go, the quad. That is the quad. The quad. I'm going to get this one back. Oh, this is a big one, Simon. Are you through? Look at that dude right there. Oh, just another triple sow cow. Completes the quadzilla. Oh, four in a row. And that is something that you can expect if you head out after these fall fish. The key is when you're on the fish, stay on the fish. Your electronics are your eyes. And I'll tell you what, you may have to bundle up. You may have to wear a helmet. You may have to bounce through some waves. But as you can see, it is well worth it. Dave and Simon fished for four hours and 36 minutes, made 704 casts, and boated 34 supersized small jaw, with their five biggest fish weighing an incredible 30 pounds. And that's the score. Now it's time for the facts. Every single one of today's fish inhaled a melon copper four inch jackal crosstail shad, rigged on a one aught trocar TK150 drop shot hook, fished on a seven foot two medium action Shimano crucial drop shot rod, paired with a Shimano Stella C3000, and spooled up with 15 pound test timber brown power pro super slick with an eight pound fluorocarbon leader and that's the facts <laughs>